Hi everybody, it's Jean from Vintage. Today we're going to be making six easy pairs of hammered and patinaed earrings. Featuring this hammered metal earrings bundle kit and you'll get all of the blank seen here along with enough ear wires and jump rings to complete six pair of earrings and also included is this four ounce ball peen hammer. We will be also featuring some of our new Patina FX kits in the two color range, uh, Aqua Green Oxide, Gold Green, and Sky Sapphire. I'm going to get started adding some of the hammered texture to our blanks, and I'm using a steel bench block and a rubber dampening block. But also you can use any hard surface. You could do it on the concrete outside, you could do it on uh, stone, rock, just really you have a lot of options. So I'm going to be using the ball peen side of our four ounce ball peen hammer and I'm just going to add texture to the curve and lower third of these large copper circle blanks. So this is just a light tapping motion and I like to rotate the blank around to make it easier for me to access the different areas. So this is adding just a little bit of light texture and I like if when I'm doing a pair of earrings I like to go back and forth between each and add add the various textures so that they stay like a match set. So again circling around Compare those and see what those look like. So at this point, I'm going to add a couple more deep strikes, and so that will change the depth of how um, how the little divots are created. We'll be deeper with the harder the strike. You can kind of see the difference between a hard strike and a very light light strike. And I'm just going to add some um, rim shot texture to these. So it's going to give more of a vertical line kind of texture. And I'll do all four of those the same with the same technique. You don't hold it down it can tend to jump away from you a little bit but um, your hands are safe so I kind of go back and forth between the two techniques and so you can see the variety of what the rim of the hammer will create so these two are a little bit more on the sparse side and these two have more coverage so I'm going to pair these two up and I'll pair these two up and I'll move on to the triangles and we're just going to do some overall texture, concentrating on the bottoms, and then just holding this top full. So as I concentrate on the edge, you'll see that it kind of blows out the edge and gives it a more organic feel to it. ends of these. So really leave the top end more smooth and flat and then just flange out the bottom. And now we have a series of these tall tags. So we'll do each earring pair a little different. We'll start off with doing a flanged bottom like we did on the last one. So this is starting to curve up. I just want to turn that over, flatten it out. Flatten it out, so that's one pair. On this pair, I want to create a border hammered border all the way around. So I'm just gonna follow 
the edge all the way down. down that sharp edge, giving it texture all the way around. I'm going to do that same kind of um, rim shot, as I like to call it, with the rim of the hammer. We'll just do it in kind of a diagonal pattern all the way down, filling the circle. Turn it over, flatten that back out. Let's compare the two. Let's say they're pretty similar. We'll just make sure this one's flat again. So we'll start off with the aqua green oxide, and that is a combination between verdigris paint and then mineral pool stain. And I'm just using a number eight Colorful Soul Soft Bristle Brush. Uh, when using the two color oxide patina effects kits, you start with the paint and then you follow with the uh, stain. So we'll start, and I'm gonna do that this on this, uh, this textured pair. Start with a coat of the paint. And then we'll grab a bit of the stain and we're just gonna dab it on to create some depth of color. Just keep layering up on and dabbing off. The gold green starts with green opal paint and then grassland stain. Make sure that's mixed up well. And we'll do a coat of this one and then dab in this color. And then we'll just dab it off. And repeat. Till you get the desired effect. The Sky Sapphire Fire is a combination between lapis paint and Mineral pool stain. And we're going to put a coat of our lapis on, and then we'll add in some mineral pool into this to create that really beautiful depth of color. And I'm just going to wick up a little bit of that in areas. And repeat. Just add some of that in, some more of that in here. We'll do the aqua green oxide on the bottoms, and then we'll do the gold green on the tops. So we'll start off with some verdigris on the bottoms here. Dab that on and then follow that up with some mineral pool.
And then for the tops, start off with green opal. And then dab in the grassland. Just going to dab this all along the bottom here. And then I'm going to drop on a bit of the mineral pool. I'm going to come back again with the verdigris. To get this pretty color combination here. Just take a bit of the paper towel and wick away some of the extra moisture, extra coverage. And then we'll set these aside to dry. We're just going to highlight these. I'm just using the dark gray side of the reliefing block. If you don't have a reliefing block, you can use very fine grit sand and paper, or you can also use um, steel wool. I'm just going to do um, almost like that pour paint or model effect on these with the uh, sky sapphire colors. Lapis. make sure it's nice and thick on there. I'm actually just going to go ahead and apply a little bit more straight to the triangle blank. Get a nice good even coverage. And then I'm going to take the mineral pool stain and drop it directly into the color. And let those just kind of organically mix. So now some of these first earrings have started to dry and I'm going to uh, highlight these using the Vintage Relieving Block. And this is just going to bring out some more of those hand hammered details. And as you can see, as these dry a little bit more, you can see more of the depth and they flatten out to the piece a little bit more. So you could use this, leave this as is if you like that look, um, but if you want to bring out some of the high tones of the brass, use the reliefing block or um, a bit of steel wool or fine grit sandpaper. So that's kind of what, what it looks like at each stage. I'm just going to make this one match. a little bit more of this color in here. So I can zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna leave a bit, little bit more of the color in there. So I'm gonna go with a bit of a light hand and just drag the block across the top. And just be a little bit more careful. So they're pretty solid, actually. And then I'm just going to uh, just lightly highlight the tops of these. Second pair. Here we have the sky sapphire pair. So basically. 
quickly, you can start reliefing these when they're dry to the touch, when it's not coming off on your finger. And then it won't come off on your block or sandpaper. So it's kind of fun to see how you can get three really distinct looks using the same exact blank. I'm just going to relieve the tops of these. And it's really going to bring out mostly the edge detail. So all we have left to relieve at this point is our copper surface. I'm just going to take a little bit trying to highlight these, but then leave some of the artisan copper uh, patina finish up here because I like seeing that in there as well. Because our blanks have this natural age process on them that gives them this really warm, rich tone, and it also um, helps with the malleability. So you can see as you relief these, you can really see all of the hammer details and divots within the metal. So now we're ready to put all these together. So we're going to continue uh, adding holes with our 1.5 millimeter hole punch players. For this design, I'm going to be taking the east blank and making it into a connector. And we're just gonna add a hole right in the center of this point. And then for these hammered and relief triangles, we're going to add a hole right in the center of the bottom. And then for the gold green patina triangles, we're going to add three holes, for one for each of these drops to align. So for this one, it's a little bit more you have to take a little bit more time with attention to detail here because we need to line it up, make sure it is centered, and then we'll, you will mark each of the holes. So I'm just gonna go directly above it and put, put a dot where I want the hole to be. And then we'll use the hole punch pliers to add holes in each of the marked areas. And in this case, my ink bled a little bit, um, but I think it should wipe off. You can also do the hole punching before you put your colors on if you're concerned about that happening, but it's, it's wiping off actually. Then we'll add a hole to the center of this sky sapphire patinaed piece. And we're just gonna do that in the same location, very center bottom. So to do the matching pieces, I just use uh, the I just use the original piece as a template. To finish up, I'm going to be using two pair of our chain nose pliers. These ones have been well loved, as you can see, with different uh, layers of paint and patina on them. Always fun, right? So with the ear wires. To open them, all we need to do is pull towards you, slide on your component, and then bend away from you. And that makes a nice, beautiful, secure connection. So 
So to open and close a jump ring, you always want to pull towards and away from you to open and then closed with the same, mo same but opposite motion. And that will keep the integrity of the junk ring intact. It will stay round. So I'm just going to use these small jump rings to attach the rest of all of these components together. Change up the design by adding multiple levels of jump rings if you wanted. You could do three in the center here uh, to extend the area that the drops are coming down. There's just a lot of uh, options that you have with assembling these pieces together. And there you have it, six pair of beautiful hand hammered and patinaed earrings. Everything that you need to create this is available on vintage.com. All these components you can get in the bundle, which is only $34.50. It's been so fun designing with everybody. See you later.